All right, so next step is something certainly more challenging than the previous one. So in the previous one, we were given a formula, and we just had to generate the sequence. Now we're, we're given the first few terms in a sequence, and we have to come up with a formula that generates those terms. Um, now, one thing that's tricky here is you can't necessarily guarantee that your formula is correct, right? Um, it might be that there are many different sequences that begin in the same way. Um, in fact, online, um, there's a database of sequences, and you can go in and you can put the first few terms in into that database and ask it, okay, which sequences match the terms that I'm starting? So we could go in, we could go online, we could find that website, we could enter these and see what it predicts, and maybe it only comes up with one answer, maybe it comes up with more than one. But we'll, we'll try to see if we can find one that makes sense here, right? So in the first one, we're just looking for a pattern. 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, we say, okay, what do we see about these numbers? Well, it looks to me like we're going up by 3 every time, right? 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, right? So we can look at the differences, we see that we're going up by 3. Um, a lot of the time what you want to do is you want to look at things like, what's the difference between terms, right? If I subtract them, do I see a pattern in the differences? Or maybe, maybe if I divide, do I see a pattern in the, in the quotients? Um, so you try to look for any, a pattern. Any way you can come up with it, you try to look for a pattern, and you, once you've got something that you think works, uh, take a guess at the formula, see if your formula generates those terms, right? So in this case, we see that we start at 2 and we go up by 3 each time. So our guess is going to be that a n should be 2 plus so each time we go up by n, we add 3. So that should just look like 3n, right? For n bigger than or equal to 0. And we guess that, and then we check. All right, so let's do 0, 1, 2. You can check there. I still do the first couple. You can do the last couple. All right, n equals 0. I get 2. n is equal to 1, 2 plus 3. I get 5. And is equal to 2, I get 2 plus 6, I get 8. Looks good, right? Try the next one. If I put n equals 3, 9 plus 2 is 11. n equals 4, 12 plus 2, 14. Works. Okay? Um, so maybe there would have been other formulas that generate those first five terms, but we've got one that, that does the job, so that works for us, right? And of course, one of the reasons why we might want to come up with a formula like this is we might want to start looking at what's the long-term behavior, right? Uh, what can we say about this pattern for large n? Does the sequence have a limit as n goes to infinity? These are problems that we want to study soon. So if we have something like this, well, we, we need to have a formula like that if we're going to look at things like limits, right? Okay, so we look at the next one. So one of the things that we might notice here is we're alternating signs each time, right? Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And so one of the things that you might guess for your formula is that if you see the alternating signs, well, maybe there's a minus 1 to the n in there, right? That's something that alternates sign. Um, so if we put that in there to deal with the minus signs, then we can focus on the numbers without necessarily looking at the minus signs. So now we have 2, 5, 10, 17, 26, 37, and we see if we can get a pattern there. All right, well, it's not as simple as the last one, but again, maybe we look at differences. 5 minus 2 is 3. 10 minus 5, 5, right? 17 minus 10, 7. So we look at the differences, and we notice the differences are 3, 5, 7, again, ignoring the minus signs. Um, 26 minus 17, 9. 37 minus 26, 11. Ah, those are odd numbers. Okay, so it looks like we're, we're going up by an odd number every time, right? So we should add an odd number. Start at 2, and we add an odd number. So what does that look like? Um, so we're going to start at 2 we add an odd number. So an odd number looks like 2n plus 1, right? Every even number is just a multiple of 2, adding 1, 
gets me to an odd number, all right? And make sure that that's going to work for us. Um, we might have to shift things a little bit. So if n is equal to 0, we get 2. Good, right? If n is equal to 1, we get a minus 1 here. That's going to be 3 plus 2, we get 5. Minus 5, yeah. If n is equal to 2, that becomes plus 1. That's going to be 5 plus 2 is 7. Ah, doesn't, that doesn't quite work, does it? Um, no, 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 because that's just getting the odd number. So what we want to do is we want to take the previous number and add a new odd number in. So that's not quite working, is it? So it's not as simple as that. It's, it's going to be more like... Hmm, how are we going to do it? Let's see. We've got to take that and we've got to add the previous one. So what we're actually doing is doing something like this. Minus 1 to the n, and then we're going to do, we have that 2 at the beginning. And then we're going to do, it's going to be 3 plus 5 plus up to 2n plus 1, something like that. Well, that's not a great formula, is it? Um, does it work? Not really. Um, oh, but there's something that we might also notice. Yes, there's another thing we might notice, okay? Each of these numbers is one bigger than a square. Okay. Now, I noticed that because I happen to remember that there's a, well, I mean, maybe we should have noticed that right away. Um, but there is a formula that you can prove that says if you add up the first n odd numbers, 2n plus 1, uh, what you get is simply n squared, right? Start at 1, 1 is 1 squared. 1 plus 3 is 2 squared. 1 plus 3 plus 5 gets you to 9, which is 3 squared. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 9 gets you to 16, 4 squared. Um, right? Now, the way you actually establish that as truth is using a technique called mathematical induction. You do a proof by induction, which is not something that you're probably going to learn in your calculus course. Uh, you're going to see that maybe in an introduction to proofs course um, or whatever your first sort of proof-based course is, you're probably going to run into proof by induction. Um, so what we actually want here is to realize, ha, huh, what we really should have is this should be minus 1 to the n, and then we should do n squared plus 1. That's going to work, right? 1 squared plus 1, 2 squared plus 1, 3 squared plus 1, 4 squared plus 1, 5 squared plus 1, 6 squared plus 1. Does the job. All right. So that one's a little bit trickier, right? Um, this didn't work. That got, gave us the wrong answer, right? That's just generating the odd numbers. But those odd numbers are the differences. They're not the actual terms in the sequence. So you say, no, that didn't work. We go to this one, but that's not a very useful formula. So we find a nice closed form, and now we're happy. OK. Getting there. Next one. Now, the next one I can spot just because I've been working with these numbers. I know these numbers. I know where they come from. So I can write down the answer right away. You might not be able to write down the answer right away, um, but we can start thinking about them. We'll say, OK, what's happening here? 1, 1, nothing's happening there. Then we go to 2, then 6, then 24. OK, so what's the difference? You know, How do these numbers compare? 2 is twice as big as 1. 6 is three times as big as 2. 24 is four times as big as 2, right? So we're doing times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4. 24 times 5 gets me to 120. 120 times 6 gets me to 720. Um, well, I know what these ones are. This is simply the sequence of factorials, okay? Remember, we, we said that 0 factorial is 1, right? 1 factorial, 2, 3, 4 factorial, 5, 6 factorial. It's just the factorial sequence. Okay, not so bad. One more to go. The video is running a little long, so let's dive right in and see if we can answer this last one. <coughs> we should have split this into two halves. 5 over 2, 5 over 2, 15 over 8. It looks OK. At first, you can't really see a pattern here, right? Um, 
two, two, eight, four. Oh, it drops way down. And then 32, um, what's going on there? Um, well, one of the reasons why you can't see a pattern here is that we've reduced the fractions, right? Um, so reducing the fractions is kind of hiding what's actually going on here. 5 over 2 is the reduced form of 10 over 4. 5 over 4 is the reduced form of 20 over 16. Okay? Ah, so if we don't reduce those fractions, the numerators are going 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, which is multiples of 5, all right? And the denominators are going 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Those are powers of 2. Okay. So on top, 5n. On the bottom, 2 to the n. And n is starting at 1. All right? Let's confirm that it works. If n is equal to 1, we get 5 over 2. If n is equal to 2, we get 10 over 4, which is 5 over 2. If n is equal to 3, 15 over 8. And is equal to 4, 20 over 16. Works, right? We got it.